Cold opening. Intro joke. Cut to title screen. God, these videos are getting more and more lazy by the second. War Gods was an arcade one-on-one -on -one fighting game initially released in 1995, developed by Midway and ported to consoles by Euricom. If you don't know Euricom, they were behind many licensed games, but were also responsible for Crash Bash and A Hero's Tale. They were good, but not quite Naughty Dog, Insomniac, or even Vicarious Visions. War Gods was Midway's first attempt at a 3D fighting game made with a virtual skin engine, which sounds like a VR porno, the same engine that would go on to be used in Mortal Kombat 4. Though it was a big step, impressive at the time, and groundbreaking for Midway, War Gods itself left a lot to be desired as it was initially received with mediocre review scores at best and quickly faded into obscurity. Surprising considering it was on the N64 and there's a subset of idiots who think that the console with this controller was the peak of gaming. Alright, so we finished the design for the prototype. Tell me what you think. I like it. But never mind, I bought War God Sight Unseen for $2 and had never heard of it, so this is practically a first impressions. So War Gods was one of the first fully 3D fighting games. Question is, does it hold up without the advent of rose-tinted glasses? Does it hold up to a fresh perspective? And I guess a better way of putting it, does it pass the nostalgia test? So, the plot of this game, if you can even call it that, is that a mysterious ore gives 10 humans strange powers and then they fight about it. That's it. I know fighting games aren't known for their stories, well, except Soul Calibur 2. But this is just pathetic, you're given almost no context whatsoever. You're not even told any of this in the game as far as I know, at least in the N64 version, which is the version that I'm playing. So as it sits, for the layman who doesn't go out of his way to check, there's almost no plot to speak of beyond MacGuffin Power's fight. Like, who are these characters? Why are they fighting? What are their goals? Who is the final boss? Why is one of them fighting in their underwear? I mean, I'm not complaining, it's just kind of impractical, don't you think? Maybe if I beat tower mode, I'll find out about these characters, however, that's easier said than done, but we'll get to that later. So from the outset, there's almost nothing to go on, so examining this game narratively would be like writing an essay about a blank canvas. Not impossible, but pointless as a tit-flavored lollipop. So there War Gods goes, falling down at the first hurdle of context, and from that bar set so very low, it only sinks deeper. I could forgive the contextless fighting if the game played okay, but it doesn't. Look, I I've never played, like, survival arts or tattoo assassin, so this is a relatively uninformed statement, but as a fighting game, War Gods might just be the worst one I've ever played. For a one-on-one -on -one fighter to be any good, the one-on-one -on -one fighting needs to, you know, work. And surprise, surprise, in War Gods, it isn't. From what I understand, there's actually a significant reason for this. War Gods was Midway's first attempt at a 3D fighting game. The 3D fighting engine they created was brand new and very unrefined, and they intended to use it for the next Mortal Kombat game. However, because it was so rough around the edges, it had a lot of kinks they needed to work out, and they weren't willing to throw Mortal Kombat to the wolves with an unproven engine and risk making a bad game and ruin the public perception of their most popular franchise, sealed so Daikatana. So War Gods was created as a sacrificial lamb to test everything out, and use the feedback to make Mortal Kombat 4 as good as it possibly could have been, which it was. Noble as that may be, that does mean that War Gods was never going to succeed based on the intent behind it. Now I don't remember where I read this, but I do remember reading this info somewhere when I first bought this game, so I might be completely off base. So if anybody knows whether or not this information is correct, feel free to let me know, but even if it's not true, that's what it feels like. War Gods feels like a glorified engine stress test, and it shows in almost every aspect. We already talked about the non-existent plot, but this game fails as a fighting game as well. I'm not one for fighting games, well, except for Soul Calibur 2. But I can at least see the appeal and see why War Gods is a shitty fighting game. If you can't pull off balanced, smooth, free-flowing, intuitive fighting, you fail immediately. The engine is lurchy as fuck, with spastic movements in quite a lot of the animations, and as a result, War Gods just does not feel good to play. The fighting is clunky and awkward at best, there's no cohesion to the moves, no proper flow, the speed and flow of each move is almost chosen at random, meaning combos are hard to pull off at the best of times, there's no intricacy, no room for skill, it's all about luck whether or not the game will register what you're trying 
trying to do properly because of how incohesive each move is, and there's a slight bit of jankiness to how the input speed connects to the animations of each move, and particularly the stringing of combos at a frame by frame level, giving the movements an almost random speed. If you don't know what I mean, just imagine a driving game where turning left is slightly faster than turning right. It's not much, but it's incredibly frustrating and confusing in the heat of the moment by moment encounters. It may look like I'm sucking, but I'm actually trying really hard to pull off the combos, but the slight movement jank, it just kills the flow. It may not be much, but in a fighting game, the slightest imperfection can kill the game. In this case, all these problems just make you gravitate towards button mashing, not helped by the atrocious animations. Okay. Atrocious is a strong word, but for a fighting game to feel at its best, it needs to run at 60 FPS for maximum precision. I'm no FPS elitist, I'm fine with 30 as long as it's at least 30, as long as it's a consistent 30. But fighting games are one case where there's no excuse because they should be about counting frames and absolute precision. Whether or not this game actually runs at 60 FPS is irrelevant because the animations don't. It's like they randomly removed half the frames for how choppy some of these animations are, so it feels just different disjointed enough to be imprecise, and imprecision in a fighting game is pretty much rule one. If anything else, make the controls feel exact, but War Gods fails at that in many ways that aren't apparent unless you play it yourself, but don't. So the fighting and the act of stringing combos is awkward, and that's a good word to describe War Gods, awkward. But frustrating is a good word as well. The lack of polish makes the act of fighting and attempting to string combos outright frustrating to pull off. So unless you're super determined to do combos and learn around the awkwardness, you'll find yourself button mashing because by the basic design of this game's fighting mechanics, imprecision, random pace, etc, it's practically encouraged. Although at the very least, this game is controlled on a 2D interface with D-pad controls because that was slightly rare amongst N64 games. So that's one good thing about this game. You use the D-pad. There's also very little impact or weight behind your hits. There should at least be some sort of viscera to your strikes, but none such exists. Maybe that's to do with the subpar sound engineering. Or maybe it's to do with the odd hitboxes. Early 3D fighting games had issues with clipping, and this is no exception. So you end up feeling like you're punching through your opponents half the time. I think that's an issue with 3D fighting games of this era in general, actually, because 2D pixel art is just that. 2D. So each object is a cohesive whole that you can very easily have proper hit detection for. Fist meets character model, character is hit. Whereas with full 3D, it's much harder to detect hits when by their very nature, 3D models are hollow and the elimination of layers and the additive of depth, it's harder to measure when something's in the hitbox and from what angle. If you throw a punch, the animation plays out until it's over. In 3D, a blow has to connect in all three dimensions. And so you see the two models clip into each other for a cohesive hit to take place as there's no way to disguise the collision. In 2D, one layer stays on top of the two, meaning that you don't really see anything clip into each other for the hit to connect because there's no depth, and so you can use the 2D plane to disguise collisions. Clipping in 2D would require sprites to merge into each other, and as long as one sprite remains on the top layer, which is by the nature of the game what happens, there's no clipping because there's no depth in which it could clip. However, 3D models will clip into each other in a very ugly way much more reliably because the character models need to collide for the hit to look connected simply because of that third dimension. Depth is a very hard thing to work around. It's much harder to quantify when something is or isn't hit in 3D unless one model clips into the other. You could disguise this with well-made systems of animations, hitboxes, and knockback, but even then, if your foot continues to travel as it is regardless of if it connects or not, and your opponent doesn't fly back enough, your foot will clip into his character model, and now I've said clip so many times I think my hair is gonna spontaneously cut itself. I'm sorry, you want me to get a haircut for a cutaway gag? Uh, yeah. Well, Fuck it in a bucket, I'm not doing that! Well, then we have a problem. You know what? No, no. I'm gonna go speak to my agent about this. No, I'm not agreeing to this. <sighs> Alright, bring in the understudy. I'm TDX. And that actually brings me to another issue with War Gods as a 3D fighting game, the issue of animation knockback or the lack thereof. Your animations will play out the exact same whether or not they connect. Pop quiz, if I were to punch somebody, would my fist A connect and continue traveling at the exact same velocity afterward, or B stop or severely slow down on impact? If you picked A, congratulations, you just won a job at Midway! 
Also, I'll now track you down and put chlorine in your gene pool. That's something that a lot of 3D fighters of this era lacked that 2D fighters got right. Flying kick somebody in Street Fighter, you bounce off. There's physical feedback of impact, or as I prefer to call it, there's connection knockback. If a kick connects, you want both characters to react as though a kick just connected so I feel the visceral impact, otherwise it just feels like I'm fighting a ghost or am a ghost. Unfortunately, that's the case in War Gods. Press button, animation happens, clip through opponent, opponent reacts, player doesn't rinse and repeat, no viscera, no impact, and all the weight of Apparation's play fighting. For such a small problem as clipping is, it takes away so much from the overall experience in War Gods, and it is egregious. These days, with better technologies, it's not a problem. Fighting games these days feel so weighty and realistic, it's almost disturbing, which is great. But wow, did I get off topic. I guess you could say there is viscera in the hits on account of the copious amounts of blood coming out, like six foot raindrops, but there's nothing about any of it that feels real in a game trying to recreate fighting, what about the character balancing? <laughs> what character balancing? Half these characters hit like brick shit houses, and the other half hit like butterfly kisses. So it's even odds whether you get your ass kicked regardless of difficulty setting or win in embarrassing fashion. So the difficulty balancing as a result is all over the place. Not to mention that the difficulty settings are all over the place. My reading is easy for beginners, normal is for moderately skilled gamers, and hard for people wanting a challenge. But even on the easiest setting, by the end, I still can't win. Mostly because the final boss hits like a brick shit house on steroids. I didn't even realize how ineffectual my main was until I changed over to Colossus here and realized how much more powerful he is. What the hell is going on? And one and two and three and four and five and six and seven and eight and one and two and three and four and five and six and seven and eight and Thank you for choosing Voodoo Magic Masseuse, getting the kinks out by any means necessary. Graphics? I don't know, they're okay I guess, but horribly uninspired. Everything looks bland and stereotypical, like just think about the most generic setting for something like a temple and that's what it is. And sometimes they don't even go that far, sometimes it's just a forest or ruins, like can they think of one unique idea or at least something interesting? The final boss is in a pit of magma for Christ's sake, like they can't even come up with one unique idea. I feel like my eyes are glazing over just looking at this game, it's so visually boring. And don't even get me started on the character roster. Most of them are just dudes in army fatigues or chicks in armored bikinis, so it's painfully uninspired. Fighting games are supposed to be a celebration of characters, but that's not exactly the case here because there is no character to speak of. I chose to play as Voodoo, him being the only slightly interesting character, but even then that's only because he looks like Book of Souls era Eddie the Head. But the rest of the characters are such uninspired, boring, lazy, one-note stereotypes. On the note of Eddie the Head, come to think of it, every character's one-note personality can be described with an iron Maiden song. Tell me why I have to be a power slave. Cause somewhere in time. Future real, da 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 da. What is real, da 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 da. Future real. I want to live my life on my own. I want to lift the unturned stone. Okay, that one was a bit of a stretch. Honestly, I'm struggling for things to say because this game is so barren. Beyond tower mode, there's nothing to do. There's maybe one hour of pure content, less if you're any good. So there's almost nothing to talk about, nothing to work towards. You fight and that's it. You may ask, well, what do you expect from an N64 game? To which I respond, um, competence? There's a such thing as future-proofing. There's what, six stages and 12 character models? <laughs> I know cartridge space is limited, but every single N64 game I played has way more content in it, including Mortal Kombat 4. Well, it's an adaption of an arcade fighting game. They usually don't have that much content and are designed for short playthroughs. You want to know what else was an arcade fighting game? Soul Calibur 2 and the PS2 port lasted me a whole summer. Fuck, the console port of Street Fighter 2 had more content in it and that was a whole generation before War Gods. So there's almost no excuse. They could have added to the console port to make it last longer, but there's almost nothing here. There's only two options on the title screen, play game and options. But maybe I'd be more forgiving of the lack of content if this game felt any good to play, like for example Tekken 2. Though even that game had like six different game modes. But War Gods? <laughs> Just forget about it. It doesn't feel good to play, it doesn't look good, sound good, or have any last ability or replayability. Play it through once, you've seen 
mean everything. The point being, the entire game just comes across as incredibly lazy, like Midway made it in their sleep. Between uninspired graphics, a boring character roster, clunky combat, an anorexically thin amount of content, and a non-existent story, there's just nothing I can point to and say, there was effort put into that. And other than being what is essentially a prototype for Mortal Kombat 4, possibly, there's nothing no- <laughs> There's nothing noteworthy about War Gods whatsoever. Even if this game was made with more intent than testing out the virtual skin engine, I can't buy that because it really does come across as a glorified engine stress test that they slapped onto a CD or a game cartridge and sold for something like $50, which is far too much. Fuck, I spent $2 and even that's too much. I could have bought a bag of chips or a week's vacation in Mexico. Its only significance is its relation to Mortal Kombat 4, and in that respect, it served its purpose. They worked the kinks out and Mortal Kombat 4 was darn good, but as a standalone experience, War Gods is pointless, has no reason to exist, and is frankly one of the laziest, clunkiest, and maybe even the worst fighting game I've ever played. Hilariously, I barely even know what I'm talking about. I'm no expert on fighting games, I barely know what whiff punishing is or what a proper anti-air is, all I know is game design and look how much I was able to find wrong with War God's design with my limited knowledge of one-on-one -on -one fighters. There by all rights shouldn't even be five minutes worth of talking points in this game, yet I, a person who lacks a lot of fighting game prowess, can find so much to complain about. And after looking into it, apparently a lot of these issues were exclusive to the N64 version. Yeah, allegedly the PS1 version fixes a lot of these issues, so that's good. I haven't played it, but it's something at least. But as it sits, honestly, it doesn't matter how good the PS1 version is, this is the version of War God I'm playing, and it is one of the, if not the worst, one-on-one -on -one fighter I've ever played. So you probably could have guessed this, but War Gods does not pass the nostalgia test. Whatever its significance was, whatever its purpose was, honestly, War Gods no longer has any reason to exist now that it's served its purpose. I couldn't recommend it to fans of fighting games or anybody else, really. It, I think, it, honestly, it's a completely shitty game that should be left in the sands of time along with my early videos. I'm skeptical about this, but, uh, you know, nothing really... God, you could weaponize that amount of cringe. You know what's funny, though, is that normally when I shit all over a game, I'm always bracing myself for the, the fan base to, to crawl up my ass and uh, get all angry, ah! and you know what? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm anticipating something. I'm anticipating something for War Gods. Well, you know what? <laughs> to the entire fan base of War Gods, bring it. I can kick both your asses. <laughs> uh, you see what it did there? Mm. Well, anyway, stay tuned next time, and we're going to talk about WW. <laughs> oh, so apparently Kim Jong Unfuckable is a fan of War Gods. Huh. You know, that explains so much.